personal. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, there was so much talk and hoopla over the Remy Ford Odebeck Komotov fight going into the fight. Um, I feel like I played a big role making that fight a little bit bigger than it, than it was. And the, and the fight, you know, they undersold it, but it definitely over delivered. It was one of the best fights I've ever been to. Definitely a fight of the year. Uh, front runner at the moment at this moment in time, but the other world title fight was Venado Lopez versus Rhea Abbey as they were t taking on uh, each other for that IBF title. And I didn't I didn't really talk about that fight as much because you know it got it got overlooked a little bit a little bit because of Komatov and Ford. But wanted to just kind of give my quick thoughts on this whole thing be on that fight before I have to check out my Airbnb here in a second. But um, listen, Venado Lopez gets the eighth round stoppage. And um, it, was, it was very, for the most part, I thought it was one-sided. I mean, Rhea Abbey is a fighter that I thought was a good boxer. Could, 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 you know, he has a little check right hook that he likes to throw and spin off of. Um, he was obviously able to hit Venado because Venado, you know, boxes with his hands down. And he's all like this and he's like that. And he is, he's very unorthodox, right? So, Rhea Abbey definitely he hit him his fair share of times. But... Rhea Abbey ain't no puncher. He ain't punching like that. And um, Venado, I thought, for the most part, gave him a one-sided, slow, concussive beating. Um, going into the third round, it looked like Rhea Abbey's face looked like it. he had been in there for 10, 11 rounds, right? So Lopez, in a sense, I don't think he's as good as Emmanuel Vaquero Navarrete, but he's got the same thing going for him where he can throw punches and be very unorthodox, and, and, and he breaks all the rules, all the fundamentals, all the rules of boxing, he breaks all of them, but he makes it work for him. You know, the great Evander Holyfield said many years ago to me, you know, um, you gotta fight the fight that works for you. So, um, you know, that's what he does, and, and, and he makes the third successful defense of his title. And um, as far as, you know, how long could he keep that belt? Because right now, a lot of people are looking at Venado Lopez as, the the uh, you know I've seen people say that they, they think he's the weakest champion in the, in the division or you know one of them. Uh, Raymond Ford is in an interesting position because Raymond Ford, I believe from what I was from, from what I was told. Now I could be I could have maybe heard it wrong, but from what I was told, uh, his contract is up with Matchroom Boxing very very soon, which actually played a role as to why Eddie Hearn did not win the purse bid. So depending on what happens, maybe uh, Raymond Ford. Who said he he wanted to stay at one or move up to 130? Stays at 126 for the Venado Lopez uh, unification fight. But then see if he fights him, and then he wins. Then he's he's gonna have to stay at 126 maybe longer than he wanted to. And then now you know that that puts Raymond Ford in a position where okay maybe um maybe just maybe you know you you, you stay at the way too long and you and that that winds up being the reason why you lose a fight more so than the, the next guy being better than you. But uh, look. Venado's part of this whole top rank stable with uh, featherweight, so obviously, you know, I saw Bruce Shushu Carrington uh, go over and hug him after his fight. So I know that's a fight that um, the powers that be, the people at top rank, will look into. Right now, as, uh, as I'm talking, uh, Shushu Carrington is number six in the WBO. So he's already in a position where you kind of know what route he's going. He's going to try to go and get that title. Uh, that route, you know, Espinosa the champion. So maybe he wants to go and fight a guy like Espinosa, and then if he can get it there like that, then he then that's 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 the fight he winds up, um, you know, taking to um to get to Venado Lopez if he can beat Espinosa quick because Espinosa is a very good fighter himself. But um, you got him, you got Ruben Villa, another fighter. But it's kind of annoying because I think out of, out of all the rankings, right, like, like just looking at all the rankings in the, in the sanctioning bodies, the IBF has the weakest featherweight rankings. So I felt like he he could fight. A couple more guys in the top 10 or, or the top 8 or the top 5. And it really wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt Bonato that much. I mean, you got like guys like Jonathan Lopez and Jordan Gill. And, you know, you know, decent fighters, solid guys. But it's not what the other rankings uh, are, right? So I know you got Ruben V at 10. Ruben V is an in-house fight they can make. Um, but then a the fight I want to see is, is is God willing, you know, Angelo Leo, my boy Angelo Leo, get his second crack at a world title. I think, I think he beat the. I mean, I think he would beat. I want to. I think he would beat Ruben Villa. I think he would beat Ruben Villa. Not Ruben Villa. Um, 
Venado Lopez. I think he'd be Venado Lopez because Venado Lopez is a guy that, you know, I understand. He, he fights his style. He has his chin up in the air and whatnot. And, but, um, and, and it's all well and good to do that with guys that can't punch, that can't match your work rate. But Angelio can punch at 126, and he does have the work rate to offset some of what Venado does. So I, I would like that fight. I think that's a good fight for boxing. Um, but look, man, I really feel like Venado is going to be one of these guys that's TV friendly for the rest of his career. I mean, he's, he's a TV friendly fighter. He's a guy that, you know, is, is flawed but effective. And those guys always make for great TV fights. But as far as Rhea Abbey, you know, Rhea Abbey, I think, got the fight beaten out of him. I mean, that, that I don't know, I don't know how, how old is Rhea Abbey. Rhea Abbey is what? How old is my man from Japan? And it's funny, too, because I, I saw some people picking uh, Rhea Abbey just because he's Japanese. And it's like, guys, just because Inoue and Kenshiro and all these guys are champion doesn't mean that everyone's, you know, that level of fighter. I, I've said it before about Rhea Abbey when I made my video about him. I said, look, he's a good, solid boxer, but I wouldn't classify him in the same caliber of guys like Inoue, Kenshiro, and, and you know, the creme de la creme from Japan. But he's good. You know, he's good. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. So Rhea Abbey is 30, and I think his last couple of fights... Have taken a lot out of him. I mean, he fought Kiko Martinez. He had to grind that one out. Um, Bernardo Lopez obviously was a big time uh, beating on him, and he's and he's had some fights in his career already. You know where he's he's just been through a lot of war, a lot of tough fights. So I'm not saying he's going to retire, but you know, Rhea Abbey, I definitely think needs to get to a stage in his career if he wants to like compete at the top top level. He's going to have to, and I don't know if he can change this because it's so drilled into him with that Japanese you know base is. Um, you know, just learn how to fight more in the pocket. He had no fighting. He had no skills. He had very little skills in the pocket. And even when he got in the pocket, he would just touch him and, and try to get back to the middle of the ring. And, and there's that little Japanese pendulum step. You know, he couldn't handle the vo volume and the pressure of a guy like Venado Lopez. And um, it showed in a major way. So, uh, you know, respect to him. He's a, he's a true warrior. I, I, after the fight, he, you know, he, I saw his face. He was beaten up bad, but he was brave and he was determined. And he was and he tried his best. It just wasn't enough on the night, and the night belonged to Venado Lopez. But look, there's so many great fights with Venado Lopez. So, um, you know, any any ver any sort of out of, out of the three fights I want to see the most for Venado next is any, you know, K Bruce Carrington, Ruben Villa, Angelo Leo. Th th those are the three fights I want to see the most for, for um, Venado Lopez. If he takes any one of those three fights, I'll be okay. But I don't think he'll probably do that. I think he'll probably fight like a guy like Arnold Kagai, who's number three. Or Tomoki Kameda, or you know Jordan Gill, you know something along that line. That's what I think will happen. But happen. But what I want to happen would be um, Carrington, Via, Angelo Leo. Any one of them three, I'm good. But um, yeah, that's 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 my little thoughts on the fight. Uh, Venado Lopez stops Rhea Abe and beats the brakes off of him. Rhea Abbey beats the brakes off of him and makes the third defense of his title. Uh, unorthodox, yes. Breaking the rules, yes. But effective, equally yes. So uh, congrats to him. On uh, continuing his title reign, uh, you leave your comments down below. Who do you want to see Venado Lopez fight next? Uh, make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canada, Florida, New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.